Every learner has similarities and differences. They came from different environment, race, background, social status, and the likes. Since learners are diverse, they also have different needs and behavior. It is a challenge for a teacher to handle diverse students. I can hardly visualize how teachers do that. Imagine having four sections with 50 students each, and each of them are different to each other. That's why teachers should carefully plan strategies and techniques that will cater the needs of each student. They must not judge right away because we did not know their potentials and personal reasons. We need also to be fair to all our students and teach their classmates to treat them without racial, social, and gender discrimination. We must move forward to a goal that even learners are different, they should be united towards learning. At this juncture, let us explore more the domain 3, diversity of learners, and let us try to ponder the questions under activity 3. We, the group 3, are so excited to share our observations and insights about this topic. I am Jandaril Simaritdam, and welcome to the distinctiveness of a learner in a diverse classroom. Here is the narrative report on Domain 3 Diversity of Learners discussions and lecture of our group. Mr. Reginald B. Austria started the class by checking the attendance of his students. He also reminded them to open their cameras during the lesson. We observed that not everybody opened their cameras. Maybe they were shy or they have particular reasons. However, we noticed the differences of those who opened their cameras. Some were really shy and not looking directly. They also turn off their cameras after the attendance. Some are confident and smiling all throughout the lesson and let their cameras open until the end. After checking the attendance, Mr. Austria started the lesson about kahulugan na economics sa pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. During the lesson proper, Mr. Austria prepared questions and activities for the students. He prepared strategies like random roll call using name shuffler that he developed to choose who will answer. We noticed that there were students who were really active in reciting and answering the activities like Angela, Karel, and Zaina. You can see their virtual hands every time a question was asked. But some students also had a hard time in answering the activities and questions. For example, a male student was asked by Mr. Reginald. He cannot answer the question and just laughed at it. Some students are willing to help those who were having a difficulty by raising their virtual hands. We felt a harmonious relationship between them despite of their differences. They were willing to help each other and not to compete with one another. Mr. Austria gave praises for those who recited and encouragement for those who failed. He ended the lesson by giving an assignment. As a summary, in the class we observed, we noticed that almost all of them were residing in Bayambang, so they share a common culture. In their class, there were more girls than boys, and girls were more active and expressive to share their ideas than boys who seemed to be shy. With this, Mr. Austria developed a strategy where each student was given an assigned number and spins a virtual wheel. If it stops in the student's number, he or she will answer that question. If they want some help or they want someone to add their ideas, they may call a classmate. Mr. Austria also utilized different methods and techniques in presenting the lesson and ensuring that every student can express their ideas to the class when they raise their virtual hands. Here, we observe the crucial role of a teacher in handling learners who have similarities and differences to each other. It's really hard to notice and observe the diversity of learners in this online setup, but we managed to identify some. Let's proceed to the observation guide for the learner's characteristics. First, how much interaction is there in the virtual classroom? Describe how the students interact with one another and with the teacher virtually. Are there groups that interact more with the teacher than others? So, since the teacher already set a positive learning environment for the learners, it is evident how the students wanted to start the discussion with full of determination to learn immensely. 
I've noticed this when the students started to turn on their cameras. In here, the teacher employed number of activities that will help the learners to be actively participating. In the beginning of the lesson, some students volunteered to have free exchange of ideas regarding their topic. And as they progress to their lesson, I observed that eventually the learners begin to show their different learning strategies. Some are responsive during their recitation, which creates an interactive relationship between the listeners and the speaker. However, there are still some students who are just quietly listening to the interaction happening. But we shouldn't conclude that they don't learn at all. It is just that students are diverse. All in all, the teacher successfully created a conducive learning environment. And for the question number two, observe the learner's behavior during the conduct of the online class. How do they behave and interact differently? During the online discussion, the students exhibit good attitude and good behavior. A student's behavior during class is excellent. All the learners observe proper online classroom etiquettes. These online etiquettes include the following. 1. Muting the microphone when not talking. 2. Prepared when asked by teacher. 3. Stay seated and present. 4. Respectful to teachers. And the last one has a quiet location. The respect of the students of their teacher is commendable and because of that, the class discussion went really well. Good day, I'm Jen Edsel P. Grossa, and for the question number 3, describe the relationship among the learners. Do the learners cooperate with or compete against each other? My answer is, the relationship among the learners is really good. They interact with each other during the virtual class discussion and I did not observe any kind of competition among the learners. What I observe is that most of the learners are very active. They always collaborating with each other to make their class discussion lively. I am Adun J M Kirante, and here's our answer to observation guide for learners' characteristics. Question number four: Who among the students participate actively, and who among them ask for the most help? As we observe, most of the students actively participated in the discussion. During the discussion proper, we always notice names such as Angela Louise, Kyrell, and Zaina. We always saw their virtual hands being raised every time Sir Reginald threw questions to the class. We noticed a few students asking questions also when they did not clearly understand some explanations. But the overall performance of the class was amazing. They showed unity and collaboration throughout the discussion. Hi, I am Jean Junio. For question number 5, when student is cold and cannot answer the teacher's question, do the classmates try to help him? Or do they click raise hand button so that the teacher will call them instead? When a student called to answer the teacher's question and he or she cannot answer the given question, their classmates are trying to help them by raising their hands to answer the question given to them. Hi, this is Alison F. Gregorio. Now for the question number one, identify the person who play the key roles in the relationships and interactions in a virtual classroom. What roles do they play? Is there somebody who appears to be the leader? A mascot or a joker? An attention seeker? A little teacher? A doubter or pessimist? Both teacher and the students are people who play important roles in classroom interactions. The teacher serves as a facilitator while the students serves as learners. There is a certain student who appears to be the class leader or mayor. Some students are attention seekers, trying to capture the attention of both their teacher and their classmates by volunteering to share their answers and ideas during the discussion. Both teacher and the students are also jokers or entertainers in the classroom. They are teasing and having fun, and the teacher makes jokes to break up the boredom in the class. Hello everyone, my name is Roy Vincent Maniflor and I will 
answer question number two how does the teacher influence the class interaction considering the individual differences of the students in a virtual classroom the teacher gives equal opportunity to all the students the teacher will not ask for a specific student to answer questions during class recitation the teacher will give opportunity to students who show interest in actively participating the class recitation the class is very inclusive and the teacher shows delight whenever a student shares his or her thought to the class number one question for reflect how did you feel as you observed virtual classroom did you feel a sense of oneness or unity among the learners and in between the teacher and the learners in a new normal classroom settings as i observed the virtual classroom environment I can confirm that there is a oneness as well as a unity between the teacher and the student. Despite being in that type of virtual settings, teachers constantly review and rebuild engagement techniques to fulfill the requirements of their students. On the other hand, there are several actions that demonstrate the student's strong relationship. Sir Reginald, for example, will enable his student to contact a body if they are unable to answer the question during the recitation. When they call a classmate virtually, all of them are eager to assist one another. This demonstrates their mutual trust. Another option is that if they are able to answer the question, they can ask a classmate to answer a different question from their teacher. This demonstrates their desire to encourage their peers and friends to share their views to help in the development of their classmate's self-esteem. Hello everyone, I'm Jen Kennedy Makashev. For question number two, in the future, how would you want the learners in your virtual classroom to interact? How will you make it happen? These are the students' interaction factors I want in my learners. First is to create a welcoming learner environment that makes students feel comfortable and important. Another is set and communicate expectations. Be enthusiastic, set realistic and appropriate goals and provides adequate challenges. And another thing is encourage students to interact positively with one another that a classroom should be open, positive, and receptive to discussion and disagreements. Cooperative learning for strength, intrinsic motivation, and plays a role in developing critical thinking skills when students are required to explain and teach each other. In addition, students develop a sense of community and commitment to each other. And last is to provide some choice and control. Allow students the opportunity to make choices and experience the consequences of those choices. Let them have option on class projects and in choosing some topics for the course. Provide them with a sense of autonomy. Speaking, James Bryan Macaranas Prima. So we observe in high school and the indicated age range of children we observe was 12 to 17 years old. Now we have different development domains of physical. First, we have fine motor skills and since the class was conducted through virtual meeting, here in this class, we observe that when they tapping their phones or clicking the keyboards of their computer or laptops, it just happened that fine motor skills were applied. And for the other development domains of physical such as gross motor skills, self-help skills, and other physical skills, it was not observed because the class happened in virtual meeting. Hello everyone, my name is Kenneth Charles A. Martin. I am here to discuss the social developmental domain. In social developmental domain, we have interaction with teachers, interaction with classmates, interests, and others. In interaction with teachers, the students are confident inside the virtual class. They actively participate. As much as possible, they interact with the teacher. Interaction with classmates, I saw some students raise their hand and ask their fellow classmates if they agree or share the same thoughts. While in interest, they love sharing their ideas and had interest in answering their interactive activity. Others, they make friends with each other and they find themselves in a virtual classroom where they share a sense of oneness and responsibility to communicate with teachers and other learners. Here are our observations under the emotional domain. 
when it comes to their moods and temperament, expression of feeling does not show unnecessary behavior and feelings other than being respectful and joyful during class recitations. The students are in a comfortable mood that is more likely influenced by how their teacher interacts with the class. Under the emotional independence, the students may refer mostly to friends when it comes to emotional concerns. Here are some of our additional observations under the emotional domain. The students are transitioning between being a teen and being a young adult. They change moods quickly based on the responses that they get from the class. This is very evident because most of them are undergoing adolescent period. Under the cognitive domain, these are the following communication skills. Based on our observation, during the actual class, the teacher allows pupils to openly express their views and ideas and provides an open environment in which questions may be raised without fear or being judged or humiliated. During the activity, especially in their team activities and group work, it can increase communication, cooperation, and collaboration, allowing kids to communicate more and express themselves more effectively with their peers, something that is applicable of many parts of life and will be especially useful in their future careers. Number two, thinking skills. In our observation, during the lesson proper, the teacher provides a PowerPoint presentation containing their lesson of the day. And during the discussion, students begin to gather and assess information using the ideas to interpret the information insightfully, raise vital questions and problems within it, formulating them clearly and precisely. And they also adopt the point of view of their classmate and begin to recognize and assess their assumptions and implications. They will then reach well-reasoned conclusions. Number three, problem-solving skills. During the virtual discussion, the teacher poses questions to the student as a sort of activity. During their activity, students are aware that they must find the answer to the problem that the teacher has presented to them. They then assume or reason what they think is the answer to the problem. And by asking questions to the teacher, the student gather data to answer the questions. The students demonstrate how they generate and examine problems before selecting and developing solutions in the activity. For the additional skills under the cognitive domain, which is reasoning skills, based on our observation, during the virtual discussion, students exchange ideas, debate with one another, and provide explanation for their positions. The students demonstrate the ability to draw a conclusion from one or more premises, as well as examine logical relationship among their ideas. Each learner has a unique point of view which influences how one constructs meaning in pursuit of understanding. And now, let's move on to analysis. Our group observed high school students with the age ranging from 16 to 18 years old. And here are the salient characteristics we observed. Most of the students talk a lot regarding the lessons. They tend to be expressive of their own insights and opinions and the implications of these characteristics to the teaching and learning process are the teacher should give logical questions for students to think about the teacher should give explanations and examples which make the students look at the bigger picture and connections of their lessons to other ideas not only staying at the same topic the whole discussion hello i am jendaril simalikdam again to add some of the salient characteristics that we observe in grade 9 malakas students are both externally and internally motivated so the teacher should identify what internal and external areas that the students are motivated so that he knows how to motivate them by giving them rewards and appreciation Students began to set goals and achievement for themselves. As an implication, the teacher should also be clear on the goals or objectives of the lesson so that the learners know what to expect during the class. Students also began to develop their individual responsibility on attaining that goal. The teacher should encourage students to discover their own ways of learning. We, he must still guide them at some point to fully realize their responsibilities. Lastly, students prefer to work with others than to work alone and as an implication, the teacher should conduct group activities for the learners to collaborate to each other. Just make sure that everyone has a contribution.
One, while you were observing the learners, did you recall their experiences while you were at their age? What similarities or differences do you have with the learners you have observed? While we are observing the learners, we remembered how we experienced when we were at their age. During our time in a traditional classroom, we can eat with our classmates, play and run inside or outside the classroom, and directly discuss with fellow classmates the thing insights, ideas, and suggestions. But today, students use the online platform which there are not any face-to-face -face interactions and give them a hard time to cope up with the lessons and group activities with peers is quite difficult. However, there are also similarities in our overall experiences. Both online and traditional learning requires self-direction and discipline to get coursework completed on time. Students are also actively participating during the activities and discussion just like as before. Lastly, we have both the same goal and purpose which is to gain new knowledge and to succeed in school. For the question number two, think of a teacher you cannot forget for positive or negative results. How did she or he or not help you with your needs in terms of physical, emotional, social, and cognitive? How did it affect you? My answer, the teacher that I will not forget is my advisor during my senior year. Her name is Mrs. Judy Ramirez. She is very kind, approachable, friendly, and intelligent. She treats us like her own sons and daughters, and she always encourages everyone in her class to step up and don't hold back. Whenever we face struggles in our studies, she is always there to help. She always makes time for us whenever we need her. She is our number one supporter when we have to compete in school activities or programs. During in her class, she is very energetic and very professional. She always exhibits good practice and good performance. She is very dedicated and passionate to her professions and she is excellent in using her strategies and techniques in her teaching approach. We love her very much and we are inspired by her actions. Her actions help us to develop physically, emotionally, socially, and mentally. We learn a lot from her and I must say, a lot of us in our class are inspired by her teaching approaches because most of us are taking education as our professions. And as her students, I would like to be a good teacher like her who always there to help, guide, and support her students. And I would like to be a teacher who inspired every youth of today's generation. And for the last question, share your other insights. The learners in today's generation are still developing in terms of teaching. Teachers should discuss lessons that are appropriate to their students' level of learning, and teachers should use language that are applicable to their level. The 21st century teachers must know how to use the technology and they should well equipped because the learners in today's generation are more likely into technology. They learn better when technology is present and their discussion and the expectation to their teacher is very high. And I think to achieve and to meet these expectations, teachers must attend seminars, training, and webinars that teach how to master the technology. Here are the evidences and documentation for our observation in Grade 9 Maganda. Again, we are the Group 3. Thank you for watching.